Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to another workshop in the Digital Scholarship Fundamentals Workshop Series. Uh, today, we'll be looking at the introduction to the Open Science Framework. Uh, my name is Kevin Gunn. I'm coordinator of Digital Scholarship, and I will be co-presenting with uh, Lee Wade, our STEM librarian. Hi, everybody. So let us get right into it. Um, So our goals today is just talk very quickly about the Center for Open Science. They're the folks that have created the uh, uh, OSF. So we will uh, look at what their mandate is, their mission. Uh, then we'll briefly look at the uh, research life cycle uh, uh, of a typical project. And then we're gonna spend the majority of our time uh, working through a tutorial, that gets you started from uh, um, from scratch into creating a project and getting going. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So the Center for Open Science uh, was founded in 2013 as a nonprofit in Virginia. Uh, it is, the mission of this, is, uh, of this uh, center is to increase the openness, integrity, and reproducibility uh, of research. So um, they provide a whole bunch of different services. Um, they have research assistants, uh, training, uh, they provide reports, um, give webinars, and other services for researchers who are interested in the whole concept of reproducibility uh, in research. So they have their strategic mission, uh, strategic plan up on the web uh, website. So cost is mission-driven, open, transparent, inclusive, collaborative, high-performing, efficient, and constantly improving. Uh, so this year's 2020, so we'll see what, uh, what they plan on doing in the future. Uh, so if we're looking at the research cycle here, a life cycle here, you're gonna uh, be familiar with a lot of the components here from you know, beginning your searching and discovering to developing your idea, you know, designing your study, uh, all the way to uh, acquiring material, storing and analyzing the data, you know, interpreting findings, writing the report, and then finally publishing it. But you know, there's a whole bunch of um, gaps in there um, that the, o o the uh, open science framework is designed to sort of uh, fill in. So uh, you know, researchers used to focus on the data access, the data collection, you know, published reports, and general compliance issues, right? But with the OSF, you can now have a, you can now document everything throughout this life cycle. So that's a very uh, important point to make it. So here's the uh, Open Science Framework homepage. Here uh, we'll get into it in a second. So um, the OSF was created as a free private research place for you as a researcher to house your data and your documentation to document what you're doing, uh, to share it with other folks who are interested, and also with archiving um, your research. So uh, what Lee and I will do today is walk you through uh, a number of features on the site and um, so that uh, you can essentially um, get started on a building your own project. So now I will turn the screen over to Lee. Okay, and let me go ahead and share my screen. I should mention if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. We'll be checking the chat periodically. Thank you. All right, go ahead and share my screen so you can, we can get started on our um, demonstration. So what we have here is the, the front page. When you first go to osf.io, um, you'll start with this. And because it's free and open, um, all you'll have to do is just sign up here in the corner. You can either use your ORCID ID if you have one, and if you don't, we recommend it. Um, ORCID is also free, and it's a very good way to track and um, and store your research citations. Um, Catholic does not have an institutional account, so 
either use ORCID or just sign up right here. Just put in your full name, your email, and create a password for yourself. Since I already have one, go ahead and sign in with my password. Give me a second while I do this. Okay, so here we are in my dashboard. This is what pops up first. We've got a list of all the projects that I've been working on. What we're going to do today, though, is create a new project. So what you do to start that is just click on this button, create a new project, and you are faced with a blank screen. And you can type in any title here. Um, you can change it at any time. So uh, if you're not comfortable with, if your your research changes during uh, uh, during your the time that you're doing your research, you can always change your title to refocus and um, a better decision. So here's what we're going to work on today. All right, we'll just create that and go ahead and go to that project. So this is the page that, uh, this is the, the front page. So this will store all of your project information. And I'll just go through some of the important components of it. Um, here's the title and you can, as I said, you can change that, just click on it, you can edit it here. Uh, we've got contributors, the date it was created. Uh, you can add a brief description. Um, the license comes later, so we'll talk about that. Um, and then these, these boxes here, this is where you will store your um, the information and the data and uh, communication between yourself and your collaborators. So let's say that you have uh, people that you're working with on this particular project. Just click here on contributors and you can add those people who you are working with. Um, I'll go ahead and add Kevin. And he has an account with this already so we can just easily add him. And this is something important to know here too, permissions. You can give them just read only access, um, read and write access so they can uh, edit or just read it. Administrator access gives basically the same level of access as the creator does. The other point here is I'm adding him as a bibliographic contributor, so his name will be in the citation field. And then add him. And then I have another colleague I'd like to add um, who's, um, and I don't know if he's has a, um, an account or not, but I will add him anyway. He's really good at analysis. So let me just add him. He does not. What I can do here is add him as a an unregistered contributor. So we'll click on that, put in his email, and add him. And what will happen is he will have, uh, he will receive an email from OSF asking him to create an account and to start working on this project with me. So I'll go ahead and add him. I only gave him read write access um, and because he uh, doesn't have an account yet. If he changes that, uh, we may increase his access. So we'll click back on this title, go back to the main page. And what you can see here under the citation field, now we have all the contributors listed 
for um, this particular account. Um, okay. Now the other parts that are interesting, um, this wiki is basically just a, a blank field. You can use it for anything. Um, what I like to use it for is to put in the research question. So we'll put that in. This will kind of help me stay focused on, um, on what the research question is. It'll show up on the, on the main page. Um, uh, whenever I'm, I'm doing research. So it'll help me stay focused. It'll help my collaborators stay focused. So we'll save that. And then go back to the main page and you'll be able to see that the research question is right there in the, the main wiki. Something else, this component section, this is where um, you can set up subfiles and um, it's very easy to do, just click on add component. So let's say we have a section, we're gonna collect data, so we need to have a data component. And we'll go ahead and add our contributors and add tags and create that component. And we'll continue, we'll keep working on our main page. And we'll add another component. We will be doing some analysis of that data. So we want to have a separate section for that. We'll add our tags and our contributors and create that. Continue working there. And uh, the last one I want to add right today is just a kind of a catch all. We'll call it references. Add our contributors, add our tags, and create that. Now for this one, I want to go ahead and go to the new component, and I will show you why. Um, so now we are in the reference component, okay? What I want to do here is subdivide this component. So let me show you how you can um, keep kind of layering or um, layering your, your components or your subcategories. Keep dividing that. So I want to put in a uh, reading list within this reference section. Our contributors and our tags and create that. And we'll continue working. Now when, when we say keep working here, this means keep working in the reference section. And let me show you one other thing. Let's say that within my, um, the contributors, the collaborators, my, um, this other contributor has really good analysis skills. So I wanna keep him in the data and the analysis section, but he doesn't really need to have the, the reference and reading list. He has his own, he's an expert. So we'll, we'll X that out remove him from reference. If I removed him from reference in every component in it, that would also remove him from the reading list. So we'll go ahead and continue there. Remove him. And now we'll go back to our home page. Here's the up arrow. So you'll be taken back one level. And now when you look at the citation, you can see we, we're all listed here, but under the reference section, there's only the two people listed. 
So our reference for our citation for the reference section would only be uh, Wade and Gunn. Okay, so I guess I'll pass it back over to Kevin now so he can go into a little bit more detail. I'll stop sharing and let him share his, his page. You're on mute, Kevin. There we go. So um, I'm at home minding my own business and all of a sudden I get an email from Lee saying that she's added me to her project. So I said, oh, that's very interesting. Let's see what, ha what she's trying to get me involved in here. So I go to the OSF site and I log in. And my dashboard comes up here and I look and I said, oh, look, there's something here. And it was just looks like it was just added. So I could go directly into here or I could go into my projects. I'm gonna go take a look at my projects from this angle. So I notice, oh yeah, okay, challenge of sound. Okay, I'm very much interested in that topic. So here I am, and I'm now listed uh, with her as contributors, along with Chris as a contributor, and I get to see what she was just showing us. So uh, I'm looking at this, and I'm saying, well, she's got a good start with uh, the, the file structure of our project, right, which is a different issue than the actual files. So I'm thinking, I'm looking at this, and I'm going, oh, okay, all right, I think I, what I can do is um, add some files of my own. So this is what I'm going to do. Um, I should mention at the start that um, the each individual file uh, can be as large as five gigabytes. Um, I'm not too sure what the upward uh, limit of how many number of files you can add, but you can definitely large uh, add large science uh, files there. So just to give you an idea. So I'm looking at this right now. And I see, oh, data analysis reference. And I'm thinking, well, all right, I'm going to do data. So I click on that and I click on the OSF storage under data. And this menu right here comes up. Upload, create another folder if I want to, or download whatever's in this particular folder um, to my own um, website or whatever to my own computer. Uh, but we're, right now we are interested in uploading some material. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to upload, let's see, I'll take uh, this one right here and there you go. So you, you have one particular one here. This is a PDF and I'll talk about different file types in a second here. So it's now up there and is available for uh, uh, whoever has access to the data component here. Uh, however, this can be kind of uh, slow doing this. So I'm going to go back to upload. I'm gonna pick a bunch of other things here. I'm gonna pick this PDF, this Word document, maybe this handout. I'm also gonna pick a PowerPoint and pick an R script. So I selected all those and I uploaded all of them. And I know that I've been successful, it will list all these right here. And at this point I can go to each one of them if I so desire. What I'm going to do is go back to our main page. And I'm gonna scroll down and I've got a whole bunch of different files here, right? I loaded, but you know what? I don't think they all belong in data. I think there's some uh, 
reference material here and some analysis material, this sort of thing. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this visual uh, analysis one here. I'm going to drag it, and drop it right over here. So now it's over here under analysis. And, you know, I got a couple of them here. So I'm going to do this one over to here. And a reading list, I think maybe what do we want to do? I'm going to put that over here. This one here. And there it is. So you look for the OSF storage and you drop, drag and drop it right over there. And that'll be in each of those particular files, uh, files that you've got. The important thing to remember is you can upload files um, one or many at a time, but you cannot upload folders. So uh, something to keep in mind. All right, so interesting thing about this particular project um, uh, for this uh, framework is that you can, it has a uh, built-in text editor that you can use. So for example, if you're working with R or Python or SAS or Stata or SPSS, you can upload those files and work on them right within the framework itself. itself. Um, however, it does not um, work with um, Word documents or PDFs. So you have to download those separately, work on them, upload them type thing. So uh, let me demonstrate a um, particular R file. Here, so I'm going to double click on this, our list. Ah, and there we are. And I look at that, and I go, oh, that's very interesting, but I need to do a little work up here. So I notice up here, I've got a number of features um, that I can use. Um, I can download, view, edit, revise, and that sort of thing. I think what I'm going to do right now is edit this. I just want to be very explicit. So now this little editor comes up and I'm going to put a little note in here, say, um, run tiny books. Right there, add my little contribution. I'll come back down here. And I can save it. So there it is, and it's now saved. Now, if I want to look at revisions, I can click on revisions. Do that if I want to. If I want to view, I can go back to this main page here. Uh, let's see, if I want to edit, I can change this to that. And we're saving again, as you can see down here. Now, if I go back to our main page here. You'll notice up here version number one listed. And I can rename that if I want to, I'm not going to. Um, so if I go to data here, it lists the file here again. It also uh, demonstrates right here uh, that I've actually edited twice going forward. There we go. Double click on that. And if I look at my revisions again, so you sort of have to toggle back and forth between the data, main page for the data component and then this particular file. But you'll notice here, once you go back in, it records the different um, hash functions that are listed here. 
And these, uh, if you're not too sure what a hash function is, it's basically an algorithm that uh, monitors if your original file has been uh, changed in any way, shape, or form, whether it's done intentionally or unintentionally, like through data rot and that. So you have you can cut and paste this and take it with you wherever you want to go. Excuse me. So you know you're working, you know your data integrity is 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 consistent across uh, time and that. So you list here who's changed it, downloaded, and that sort of thing. So um, that is something. <coughs> excuse me. Um, um, that's very helpful. And you'll notice up here has changed to version three. So if we go to view right here. Now let's say if I still wanted to change this thing. Um, one important thing that I recommend doing in terms of, of good practice is that you want to check out this particular file. All right. So I clicked on the check, check out. It says this would mean other, all other contributors cannot edit, delete, or upload no version. So if you have a lot of people working in this particular part of your project um, at that moment, this is a very good thing to do. Otherwise, you'll have a whole bunch of people working on it at the same time and then it gets kind of uh, crazy. So if you check it out at the same time, you know, check it out, it reloads and then you can do what you need to do, download, edit there, that sort of thing. You'll notice the button has changed to uh, color as well. And let's say we're finished with that. And it ends back to its original. So that is the text editor um, function here. But as I mentioned, it doesn't do Word or PDF uh, files. So let's see, uh, let's do this one here. You'll get a different display. Listed here. That's okay. So what you're going to have to do, you want to check it out. You then want to download it, revise it, and then upload it. And that'll be, your revisions will be tracked that way. So I won't demonstrate that per se, uh, just to give you an idea. That you are working with different files and there'll be different limitations in that. So the last thing, uh, this particular part, is that you want to know um, that the, the um, framework do, can uh, function as a data repository. So if you have um, CSV, Excel, SPSS files, for example, that you could put them all uh, up in the framework, in a particular folder, and that could be your uh, data repository as well. Uh, you have the hashtags that are listed that so you can keep track uh, whether um, anything happens to your data over time like uh, data rot that sort of thing so it's good a uh, good thing to consider um, next component I want to like to show you is the whole um, wiki function here Lee had sh demonstrated uh, very briefly what it is I just wanted to show you a couple different uh, points here uh, that one can use. So I'm going to create a particular thing for the home page. Actually, what I'm going to do is go back to the data site here. So there's nothing listed here. So I wouldn't want to add something I want to do here. So we come to this page. And I want to do something here. So you see that text editor again going. So this is a fun exercise. Did I spell that right? Exercise. Um, so I have that listed there. It's in the live editing mode. Go down here and I can save it. And there it is. And I got. Uh, wiki version tells me what the current version is and it says well there's just the one there so I look at that and sounds interesting and I saw this point um, so I want to edit this and I want to go in here and I want to say no it is not explanation point and I want to do bold just to emphasize now you'll notice 
what you have here is a couple asterisks on both sides. What's happening here? Well, um, the framework is Markdown compliant. So if you're familiar with the Markdown coding, you can use that and put it in there and it will show very differently um, how you can present your, uh, your particular work. There. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to do save. There it is. So I have two versions now. And what I can do is go under compare. And I can say what was crossed out, or in this case, what was kept. So I kept the original, and then I added my own two cents worth right here. So you can follow, uh, have a conversation with your various collaborators on, on, uh, on a particular topic. And it's, you can have that conversation just within one particular component of your project and not through the whole thing. Uh, so I'm going to go back out to the main page. So here's our main project page listed here. Okay. All right. So, you know, uh, the framework is very much about um, sharing and cross-referencing and all that. Um, so one of the things that they've got here is this add-ons feature. So I'm going to click on add-ons and there's a couple different ways you can uh, add material and link up with other uh, websites in that. Uh, one are the citations. So if you have a Mendeley account or a Zotero account, citation management software, then you can enable those and put them into your project as well. Uh, what they also have a number of features for store sites. So everyone from Amazon to Dataverse to Dropbox, um, Figshare, GitHub, Google Drive, if you want to do that. Um, so what I'm going to do is demonstrate uh, GitHub. So I'm going to do enable. And what you get, Nice warning of the add-on terms here. So it'll tell you about the permissions that you're, uh, uh, that you're gonna be working with, uh, file versions and that. I like this one here, the delete files. Files deleted via OSF will be deleted in your GitHub account. So um, if you're giving your collaborators in the OSF um, administrative uh, privileges, uh, that means they'll be able to delete stuff, change it, whatever. And if they're working on one of your files in OSF, it means it'll be changed in GitHub. So you may want to think about how you plan ahead about who you want to have access to particular files and that. So, and I'm going to confirm this. And right down here, it says configure add-ons. It says, uh, here's GitHub and it says, hey, you want to import your account from profile. So I've already logged into GitHub just to make sure. And it says, are you sure you want a link? So you can go import. And here we go. So I'm, I'm now looking at, if I pull this menu down, I've got all my GitHub um, folders um, listed here. So what do I want to add here? What do I want to add? Uh, let's see, something weird. Uh, let's see, how about courses? Let's do that. So I'm going to do save. It gave me settings updated. And I'm gonna create a repo and I'm gonna call it something else. Um, courses two, just to be sure. And there it is. Now I have courses two in my GitHub. So if everything has worked as it should, I go back to my project homepage. Scroll down and voila, there it is. With all my files and folders and stuff listed there. There's probably a lot in there, so yeah, there you go. So lots of wonderful things that you can do with that. GitHub or Dropbox or what have you. All right, sharing projects. All 
I will go back to our main page here. All right, if we go to this. So if you'll notice up here as well, we have the private and make public. If I just have reader write responsibilities, I cannot make this private. Um, um, pardon me, I cannot change this, but since I'm an administrator, I can make all this public. If I, if I click on this, it will tell me this particular um, note saying that, you know, you have to be very careful about your sensitive or restricted information uh, material that you have listed. And that, and they also mentioned too that, you know, even if you make it public, then at a later date, change it to private, you have Google's cache and other search engines that, still, that people will still be able to access the file. So again, you have to plan a little bit ahead about what you want to make public to folks. So I'm going to continue here. And here comes this up to this page. And I can make all public like this, or I can make all private like that. Or I can just do data. And it'll just, it confirms again what you have. So I won't bother going that far. So that's one way you can share your material. Now, if you're looking for similar projects um, that you've, uh, that might be of interest to you, um, you can go to the search function at the top here and see who else has been working on OSF. That may be very useful. So maybe I want to look at, say, metadata best practices. So I do that and it searches all the OSF for all the material that's at least partially public. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, 19,000 um, projects it looks like, and they're all broken down by various uh, uh, components, whether they're files, projects, um, registrations, that sort of thing. You can also, this is a good way too, if you want your work to be discoverable, you can take a look at the various uh, tags um, that are used. And this one here is suggesting some for our site if we wanted to go that way. So that's kind of helpful in that sense. You also get a list of various projects I'm going through here and the tags that they use. So one way you can do that is to um, use you know, metadata here, but maybe research data management as well, um, just to uh, put that in your own project. So people have an increased um, likelihood of discovering your material. All right, I have the next point. I'm going to turn it over to Lee. Let's see. There you go. And Lee was going to do. All right, the let next me part. share my screen again. Okay, here we are. We're back here. Um, let me show you, like Kevin was talking about, where you could add tags. That's in this section down here. So we could do. Um, Education as a tag. We could do uh, distance education. Um, that kind of thing. And then, as he was saying, uh, somebody could, if they're searching under these and your project is public, then they would be able to find your project that way. So it's also a good place to um, just to put things that are descriptors, so it also keeps you focused, I think. Now, um, once a project is public, um, one thing to, to make note of up here is this analytics tag, tab and the registrations tab. Because our project is still private, this analytics won't give us anything. Um, Basically, it is a way to find out how many people are, are, have found your project, how many people are referencing it, where they found it, that kind of thing. I'm going to show you an example. Um, 
with a, a very large project here. This one, reproducible, reproducibility project in psychology. If we look at the analytics for this one, so this one has been around since 2012. So it's been around a long time and it has therefore had a lot of people looking at it. So just for the past week, you can see almost 80 people looked at it this week. You can change that. You can look at the past month and it'll show you again how many people, almost 80, what time of day did they visit? Mostly right around just after lunchtime for us here in the East Coast. Um, they were mostly referred by direct link, but they also found it via Google. Um, just this is probably using the, the tag features. This is the um, Open Science Framework uh, search. Um, and look, it was also linked in the Atlantic. So um, that, that, that's good information for you to know uh, who has found your, how popular your research has been. I'll also show you this registrations. Um, this one has not been registered. So I'll, I'll, we'll go back to our project and you'll get a little bit more information here. If we click on registrations here, um, this is good to know. Once a registration is created, they cannot be, the projects cannot be edited or deleted. So this is something that you will want to do when you're actually sure you're completed. It's basically the same, it's very similar to putting out a preprint of an article yeah. or, um, or a published article. It cannot be changed at that point. Let me go back here. Um, let me show you something else. So this little comment section over here, this um, conversational Thing. If I am working and I want to communicate with Kevin, I'm wondering where he is in his section. Just write him a quick note. Enter your data in the data section. Comment that he will get an email then from OSF. Yeah. And he can go back in and he can reply to that. He'll need to log back in. He can reply to that, ask me what I mean, what data am I talking about, um, or, um, or anything else, really. He can, he can ignore it, <laughs> but he really shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as you can see here, the, the activity has been keeping up with everything that we've been doing while we've been working on it. Um, if there are no questions about that, um, we'll go ahead and pass it back over to Kevin and we, we can wrap up and show you, um, show you a few more things before you wrap up. Go. Let me do this. All right, there we go. We're back to our main page here. Let's see. I'll go back to my projects just to show a quick thing. So there's been some uh, um, a good question would be, um, you know, how secure is the site um, with regards to handling your data? Um, so in terms of um, data recovery, um, they, they do have many backups in place. So they do uh, nightly backups, they do weekly backups. They do have electronic and physical security measures uh, to prevent hacking and that sort of thing. However, um, they do admit that you will have to do your own research on compliance uh, issues with regards to um, outside organizations. So for example, um, the OSF is not HIPAA compliant. 
So um, if you have personally identifiable information in your project, um, that's something that you're going to have to uh, consider if you need uh, through for grants or whatever that your project be HIPAA compliant. So it's something that you're going to have to uh, keep in mind um, with working with the OSF. Uh, another thing I'd like to point out to you too, is they do have a lot of um, support on the website. If you click on the support button here, the top, They do have, you know, your typical frequently uh, asked questions list here. They have a number of OSF, OSF guides that you can go take a look at. Uh, they do have, you know, if you have technical support or other questions, uh, you can submit a request here. Uh, if I click on guides here, visit guides. You know, all relevant topics, security and privacy, for example. Um, if I'm looking at best practices, you know, I need some ideas. Um, I can get down to here, you know, how do I go about uh, file management, organizing my files, that sort of thing. You know, how, how do I make a data dictionary? Then I'll have tons of information like this listed here. So really a lot of information that you can use um, to start building uh, your particular project. All right. So at that point, uh, we're basically at the end of our presentation. And there we go. So there you go. If you have any questions or issues, um, or you want a research consultation, you can talk with Lee or myself to send us an email. Um, and that is our presentation for today. Thank you for joining us. Are there any questions? I don't see anything in the chat box. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.